arms. Okay. Feel nice and uh, set up. All right, guys. So, um, first of all, welcome to the channel. It's your boy Mickey Films. Uh, I'm glad that you clicked on this link. If you clicked on this video, more than likely you have a Z cam. You want a Z cam, or you just want to know information about it. Either way, you clicked on the right link. I am an owner of two Z cams. Um, I own the S6, which is the first Z cam I purchased about two years ago. And then uh, right here in front of me on the Crane 3S, I do have the Z cam F6, which is the full frame. And I'm currently shooting out of the S6 and I have an 11 to 20 Tokina 11, um, sorry, Tokina cinema lens. It's 11 to 20. So it's very wide. I love that lens. It's great. Um, on my B cam, which I'm looking at now, that's actually, um, shooting for my Canon DSLR and, you know, I usually don't use that camera for videos but right now I'm using it as a B camera it's more for photography for shooting you know stills um, but nonetheless the lens on there is great it's a 50 millimeter and it's a 1.2 aperture so great in low light and it's pretty far away from me but it's 50 millimeter so I have it up close uh, I'm hoping that it's in focus I do have two iPads set up one here which is monitoring, uh, I'll show you guys here. It's monitoring us, well, me. I'm um, right here, so I'm able to see myself, basically. Make sure I'm in frame. Um, as far as the focus, it's not so great. And this is through the Zcam app. Um, not really show you in focus by monitoring here, so I made sure I was in focus before I sat down. Um, to the right of me, I have another iPad and I'm using the cam the Canon camera connect app where I'm, uh, viewing myself on my B cam. So basically two cameras and two iPads and this camera here is on, but it's not recording. I am going to do a shot just so I could show you guys, uh, my setup right now, and then we'll go more into the camera. So this way you'll also see uh, the difference between the two cameras. Again, all of this that you've been seeing up to this point is from the, the S6, the Super 35. Uh, I'm going to cut this and we're going to do a shot of the F6 and they're both going to be in 6K, uh, 24 frames. So try to keep it even as possible so you could tell the difference. I think the only difference between the camera besides it being full frame and Super 35 is uh the stops i think you have like 14 stops of dynamic on the s6 and 15 on this one so maybe one more stop which we'll see the difference anyways you'll be the judge of that so be right back okay so now this is the s6 i'm gonna give you a shot right over here to the left uh, right over there to the left is the Canon uh, EOS R that I mentioned before with the 50 millimeter 1.2. I have my BM5 monitor, which is the first monitor I purchased for the Z cam. When I purchased the Z cam, I no longer use that monitor because I upgraded both of my monitors to the Atomos Ninja so that I could shoot ProRes RAW, which is what this video is also about. I will, um, I guess, go through my workflow and show you guys that. But let me keep showing you the room and the setup I have currently now. So swing this around and right in the middle of the room. Uh, that is the S6. I have that uh, pointing right in front of me and that's on the tripod. Again, I'm shooting uh, through the Atomos Ninja uh, ProRes RAW as well. And let's move over to the right. And right over here, I have a small rig light. And to the right. Uh, there goes the second iPad, which uh, that iPad is monitoring the Canon uh, um, R, the EOS R, 
uh, that I previously mentioned. It's the B cam. I have that up close. Um, I have the BM5 port keys uh, monitor on there, which is the first monitor um, I was using with the Z cam. Uh, I no longer use it because I'm using uh, the Atomos Ninja. So kind of a waste of money, like $500 monitor. But I was just learning. It was my first cinema camera. I didn't know anything about RAW and I knew a little bit about RAW. So I, I figured out the Z RAW that, that came in the cinema camera was going to be good, which it's not. I love Z cam, everything about it, but the Z RAW needs a lot of work. It just takes forever and, um, if, well, it takes forever to uh, break down once you put it into your computer. Uh, because Final Cut Pro does not um, recognize Z RAW, so you have to use their proprietary software, which that was easy to download. But is the problem is converting it takes a long time on their software, so they need to adjust that, and then it'll be great. But for now, I decided to upgrade the monitors to the um, uh, the Atomos Ninja. So let me show you the, uh, the Zoom H6. Yeah, the Zoom H6. Okay. Not in focus, but you get the point. And this way you can see myself on here. And um, yeah, this is um, more or less the F6. I like it. It's very comparable to the S6 besides, you know, being in full frame and Super 35. And, and what that means is basically you can't use certain lenses. Like I have a cinema lens on the S6 and I cannot use that on here. I, I can, but I won't be able to utilize the whole lens. It would only go up to like 14 millimeter. If I go up to 11, it'll crop in and you get the black. You don't want that. So. I leave the cinema lens with the Super 35, which is made, that's what it's made for. And if you have any suggestion on a good full frame lens for the F, the F6, um, let me know, comment down below. So let me put this here. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I spoke about the cameras. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I did purchase this camera, the second camera, because uh, I was doing more events, weddings, etc., and I needed a second camera. So I wanted to keep kind of the same uh, flow of the Z cam. I already had the S6, so I decided to purchase the F6, which cost when I purchased it 3000 I know when it initially came out it was like 4500 or 4000 so I got it for three brand new from B H shout out to B H got a shout shout I get everything from B H um the original S6 I think I paid 3000 as well that's when it first came out it was 3000 and they wanted 45 for the F6 so I just ended up going with the S6 here it was the cheaper buyer at the time but I knew later on I would give me an F6, and eventually I did. And um, the best part is being able to shoot ProRes RAW, because before I would shoot um, just ProRes uh, straight into Z Cam. Um, but now I have the Ninja, and the storage, you know, it's pretty expensive. I had to a two terabyte car in here, that's about 550 from B&H as well, it's the Angel Burr SSD. And then I have a one terabyte, which is recording us right now, currently. And um, that one's around two and change. So, you know, storage is cheap. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's cheaper than what it was before. So why not shoot raw, right? And the main reason to shoot raw is just for the control you have in post. Because, you know, I'm not the most experienced filmmaker. I've only been doing this for a few years now. And what I do know is that when you're out on the field, um, there's a lot of distractions, different things going on, and your ISO might not be right. 
your aperture might not be correct, you know, your white balance. And these are things that some of the things you could do before, but like the ISO control you cannot do, you can't do unless you're shooting roll. And that's big, right? Sometimes you're going from outside to indoor, right? So the lighting changes. So now <clears throat> your ISO, if you didn't adjust your ISO because you're just going, now you could do it in post. So that's a great feature about shooting ProRes RAW and why I recommend anyone to do it with the Z Cam. Not even just the Z Cam. There's I've seen, you know, people people filmmakers are buying the Atom mode, they're using it with Sony FX3, FX6. So it's just a great uh tool and you can multi record. So I can still record in the camera at the same time while I'm recording raw into the monitor. So it's recorded into the camera, it's not gonna be raw, obviously, but it still is a backup if I wanted to have a backup. Um, yeah, so without further ado, I guess we'll go into uh, the computer. Uh, I'm gonna go back downstairs and I'll do a screen record of the workflow. Uh, just basically run down um, uh, what I what I like to do, um, you know, like I said, I'm not an expert, you guys can give your opinion, um, you're more than welcome, and, uh, you know, if I could help someone, you know, more than merrier, you know, that's the point of this, um, that's the reason why I go on YouTube, I learn almost everything that I've learned, it's on my own, I didn't go to school for this, so, without talking you to death, I hope you enjoy this video, and make sure you like comment and subscribe because I will have more content regarding Z cam and just more content of what I'm doing in general so thank you for watching uh, let's get into it we are back uh, well we're at my uh, desktop now I'm gonna open up Final Cut uh, this way we could um, give you a little rundown of my workflow and I'm probably gonna work with some other footage that's in this video um more more or less do some color grading and show you guys what you could do with uh shooting progress roll now the issue right now is that it is taking pretty long to render um i have a ter a 28 uh terabyte g ray and that's where I uh, edit from. I'm also using uh, the Mac Mini, which is not great. I want to get the Mac Studio. So right now the Mac Mini I have is M1, but it's only 16 gigabytes memory. I, I definitely need 64. I thought 32 might be okay, but I, I think I need 64 just for the amount of uh, raw footage that I'm working with. Uh, so I, I'm looking to upgrade to the Mac uh, Studio, and I'll probably give this Mac Mini to my son. So, yeah. So let's see now. Like I'm still rendering, and I just opened up my Final Cut. So, and I deleted a lot of events, projects, just to uh, clear up some space. But anyways, let's uh, let's open up a new uh, event. You know what? I'm just gonna do a new project. I'm gonna leave it under the same event. I'm sure you know how to make an event already. If you're looking at this video, so I'm just gonna do a new project. Uh, let's name it um, tutorial. Uh, Pro S Raw. And we're gonna leave it at 4K. Uh, even though we shot some of our footage with 6K, some of it was 4K. Uh, we're going to leave this at, at a 4K timeline, 24 frames, same as, as I shot it, and okay. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to take a little footage. First one I'm going to take, this is from the Canon, so I won't do that one because that's not a raw footage. Alright, let's take this footage here. <laughs> And this footage here, uh, I don't want to take so much. Um, 
I'm only gonna take a bit that way um it doesn't take a long time to render I just wanted to show you guys more or less my process so I'm gonna take this little clip put it here so it says add an HDR to SDR project so all you have to do um when you have an HDR clip and you are adding it to a standard project is just add, add the HDR effect, which I'm going to show you now, which I do like because it gives you different flavors and it helps out with the footage. I won't put it in yet just so I can show you the difference, but we will be adding an HDR effect. Uh, let me just take the volume down. So first thing I like to do, um, I go here into the info tab and right away oh it's already converted because like i said i already worked on this footage but let me put it to none so you can see how the footage looked prior to that so this is how the footage look which is not bad at all let me play it out so you can see before any conversions oh i'm gonna my tea there okay That was right before my shoe, I was getting comfortable. All right, so you've seen that. Let me get out of here. So now, uh, once I do add the overall to log conversion, because right now it's set to none. So it's, it's right now what we're seeing is the proprietary Z log from the Z cam. Uh, and you know, you have different options from, <laughs> Canon, DJI, Nikon, Panasonic, S-Log, Sony, and Sony S-Log uh, Cine, which is my favorite one to go with. So we're going to click on that, and you're going to see the image just look like all the colors went out. Uh, and then uh, for the camera LUT, I like to match it. So I add the same uh, Sony uh, gamma scene and you can play with the other ones the canon ones to look okay but i just feel like the sony has the best look color wise so now we add that you see right away the the image just just has so much more color and that's without any color correction or anything like that so let's get out of here now the next thing i like to do is i will go to uh color correct so what you could do is you could add color bore if you wanted to. Just drag it on. Oh, why do you see my final cut just shut down? And that's because of my M1 Mini. It's running low on memory. And I have a lot of files I'm gonna have to. Yeah, let's okay that. So we back to the file. So back to what I was saying, as far as let's go back here make sure we still good yeah so we still have the raw to log and the camera lut it's set on uh <coughs> sony so my next step will be to add uh, a color board and then you will go uh, right into here and then you could adjust the color which i won't get into too much now you can play with that the best thing to do is mess more with your shadows and your highlights and saturation that'll definitely help your image but luckily for me, I already have a preset that I previously made and I just saved. So right over here where it says custom are all my different presets that I saved for different projects. Like a war, Ash, a war, BMW color, custom Juneteenth, and effects preset BS, uh, effects presets, uh, Joey, I have different ones. So this one here is the one that I want to use for this video. So right away, you can see the different in the color, right? Look at that compared to without it. You see that without it and here's with it. So this preset, it's already saved just to make my life easier. Oh my God, we shut down again. What is going on? Final cut, shut down twice in a row. It's not, no bueno. All right, so let's go back here and let's add the preset. So now we add the color preset. So three steps so far is we change the raw to log conversion. We change the camera LUT right down here. And then we just simply added my own custom uh, preset, which like I said, you can do 
just by adjusting your shadows and your highlights. That's up to you to determine how you want to color your image. But I just showed you how to do it. It's not hard at all. If you don't have one of these saved, all you have, all you have to do is go to all, click color bar, slide it onto here. It's gonna open up to here. You can either switch it up to be wheels, uh, wheel or bore or curve. I like to use the wheels actually and mess with my shadows and my highlights. So now you know how to do that. Uh, my next step will be adding the HDR. Remember this is a HDR project, but it's a SDR timeline. <clears throat> so I just click here. I'm going to type in the HDR. And here it is, HDR tools. I'm gonna throw that on there. And right away you see my image just changed up. And it's, it's set to HDR tools. The mode is HDR to Rec 709. That's the standard one, the first one that it comes up to. But um, I really like the PQ look, PQ to Rec 709. It, it darkens the image a little bit, but I think you see more of, of the highlights and shadows. So there we go. See, so the image got darker. Let me go back to the regular. See, it's lighter there. And now with the PQ, it gets darker and more intimate. So that's basically my workflow there. And then I might add a letterbox, which I like to do a lot in my videos. Oh, wait a minute. On the max. Okay, so uh, let's go here. Let's type in letterbox. Letterbox. And then we're going to put the aspect ratio of 2, 3, 5 to 1. And there we go. And just like that, let's play this video. And hopefully it's not chopping up. But as you can see the different color variation. And what I'm going to show you next is how you can control the ISO levels because we shot pro as raw. If I wanted to make this brighter or darker, I can by simply controlling my ISO as if it was in the camera. So let's do that now. Let's go back to the eye here. And right over here with the ISO is at 400. We'll go down to 200, it's gonna get much darker. I right, much darker image. So more than likely not going to go with that. If anything, I'm going to increase the ISO, which I'm good with that 400. Um, but you can also put up the exposure, right? So now that 200 ISO with the higher exposure, that might be a cleaner look. Then again, I don't like to expose my, uh, I don't like my exposure so high. I feel like you lose some of the shadows. So let's go back. And we're gonna do a back to let's do like a 800 ISO, and we're gonna bring the exposure back to zero. And you can see there it's significantly brighter than it needs to be. So that's why I just leave it at four. But this is the thing I could go all the way up to 25,000 or as low as uh, 50 ISO. So that's awesome because in camera. You can only go down to 400 on the Z cam. Here you go down to 100, 250, anything under 400, you're able to do it um, on post. So we'll leave it at 400. You know what? 320 doesn't look too bad either. It makes it a little darker, but it looks a little bit more cinematic. Let's check that out. What you was watching um, before, um, it was in in uh, proxy prefer, which as if you know, um, that's the media playback, and I had it on proxy prefer, uh, just because of the rendering time gets decreased when you do proxy prefer, but it eliminates a lot of the coloring and you don't see a lot of your edits. So now I'm back to optimize, and I just wanted to show you guys what the footage looked. Uh, once it's optimized or original. So I'm just gonna uh, let it play. 
Now you guys view that. So it looked much better than the previous one. And, and this one has the audio, but. Let me go back. Okay. So nice and uh, set up. All right, guys. All right. So there you have it. Um, that is the my full workflow. Uh, you got to see the video. Um, how I do my edits. And, um, yeah, I'm glad you, you know, I hope you guys like this video and I hope that it could help someone or if you have any suggestions that maybe could help me, um, more than welcome to, if you want to comment anything positive below, please do so. And, um, again, thank you for watching and uh, subscribe.